Real quick, I wanna thank this video sponsor, which is Keeps. This week, I built myself a three-seater outdoor sofa. This last year, I built an outdoor kitchen, and at the end, I bought some furniture from Ikea so that I could start using it. However, I'm making time to replace each piece with something I've built instead. And that's a great thing about this design. You can make it a three-seater, a two, or even a single. Let me show you the process so that you can build your own. I'm personally going with Western Red Cedar for this build because of its natural rot-resistant qualities. Western Red Cedar is always my go-to material choice for outdoor projects. So I started the project by wheeling my boards and my planer to my shop's porch, then planing down the rough side smooth. By the way, I've been using this mobile planer stand for years now. I actually have a video on it if you're interested. But an upgrade I just added is a cord reel. I typically have to use a planer closed enough to an outlet for the cord on my planer to reach. But this cord reel made by Reelcraft has the ends reversed so that the female end is the extended part, meaning I can reel out however much length is needed to get to an outlet. Then the male end is the stationary so that I can then plug in my tool to start using. This is the perfect reel for any mobile station like this. If you don't have a planer, then another option is to use a palm or belt sander. However, a thickness planer makes quicker work of this step. I could typically get the side smooth enough in a single pass doing it this way. Okay, next, I took all my boards to the miter saw and started cutting them into pieces according to my cut list. This project has a few angles and while none of them are tricky, it does take some paying attention to to get all of the links correct. If you're interested, I have plans and templates available on my website. Also, remember I have a discount code for both my preferred respirator and hearing protection. You get 10% off by using the code APRIL10 at checkout on either of these. In no time at all, I had a workbench full of parts that I was ready to start assembling. Almost every piece in this build is made from one by material, but on these side assemblies, I'm doubling up on the material to beef it up. You'll see what I mean in a few minutes. To start, I grabbed the cut pieces that will make up the first layer and laid them out on my workbench to make sure everything looked correct. It creates the shape I'm going for and all of the parts fit together nice and snugly with no gaps. So next I started adding the second layer. I would always test fit my part first to make sure it was the correct length and angles on both ends. Then I would add wood glue and a few brad nails. A tip for the second layer, you can definitely cut all of the boards up front. Or if you want to make sure they're perfect, you can cut the top layer as you're assembling. This is what I did. I left my board slightly long so that I could hold my part in place, then make a mark exactly where it needed to be cut. This ensures everything is 100% perfect. Oh, and on the wood glue, be sure to use an exterior rated wood glue if yours is also gonna be going outside. Also be paying attention that the boards on the first layer don't move around while you're adding the second layer. If you're wondering about the steep angles I'm shooting in my nails, it's because the brads I had on hand were a little too long. Instead of stopping to go to the store, I just simply angled in the nails so they wouldn't poke through the back. Okay, and that is what the side profile will look like. I repeated that to make a mirrored second. And now I can give you a better visual. See, you can keep these close together to make a single seater, or you can move them apart to make it sit multiples. It's a very flexible design. Now that the sides were done, next I started on the framing that will make up the bottom. On this portion, I switched over to two by material. On these, make sure the angle of the nose matches the angle of the front board. Then, instead of lining it up flush to the front, these need to be offset inside by the thickness of your slats. Since I'm using one by material for my slats, I cut a scrap down and used it as a spacer. Instead of trying to hold both parts in place while driving in screws, I would hold it in place and use a pencil to mark its location. I went down the length of my board and did this at every location needed. This way I could lose the scrap and secure the two by in place with both hands. On these, I would apply some wood glue and then drive in two screws per connection. Next, I laid it down on my workbench, then secured the back final framing member in place with more glue and screws. Oh, no, I have four cross members because I'm making a three-seater, but if you wanted a two or even a single-seater, 
You would keep the design, but only have one or two cross members. The same flexibility goes for the back framing, which is what I started next. After getting that section complete, I moved it to my shop's floor, then moved in the pieces that will make up the back and started assembling it in the same fashion. And if you're wondering, even these two by boards were Western Red Cedar, making this entire build resistant to insects, rot, and decay. Okay, now let's start putting these three big assemblies together to make it look like a couch. I set the back on the floor to get the needed rough spacing for the sides figured out. I made sure to have clamps on hand, one on each side. And this way, when I picked up the back and held it in place, I could secure it temporarily with the clamp. Right now, I was just dry fitting it. This allowed me to make sure it looked correct before adding glue, but also mark its location with the pencil so I knew where to apply the glue. I applied glue within my pencil marks, then repeated the process to get the back in place. Really paying attention this time to make sure things were aligned as needed before driving in screws. Two things to note, be sure to use exterior rated hardware here and also look at the joint before driving in your screws so that you can place them to avoid the screws already at the connection in the framing members. Okay, now reset to start the process over for attaching the bottom. I once again made sure to have a clamp on either side so that whenever I hoisted up the bottom, I could hold it into place. My trick when doing something like this is to apply just a small amount of pressure on the clamp to, yes, hold it, but not too tight where you can't adjust it. Keep it loose enough so that you can fine tune it to the exact position you need. Here I pinned the front once it was in the perfect location. Then I used a scrap once again to test the space before securing the back. The goal here is to have the slats sitting flush in the framing. And attaching the slats is what I move to next. These are simple one by boards that are cut to length. If you go with a double or single seater, then you simply cut these down. I cut a few scraps to act as spacers in between each board to make this step go quicker. I also grabbed a second drill so that I could pre-drill before driving in the screw. When I got to the back, it's just my personal preference to work with gravity when possible. So I flipped the entire thing to lay on its back. This allowed me to continue attaching slats in the same very easy fashion. And that's another bonus to Western Red Cedar. It's extremely lightweight. So tossing around an entire sofa is actually quite simple. Let's go ahead and give it a sit test. Passed. All right, let's give it a laying down test. Definitely passed. <laughs> but now for the real business, a stomp and shimmy test. I say that's a heck yeah, pass. Let's continue. The last thing to attach is the arms. These are also made from cedar two bys. I cut the shape out at the bandsaw, then I used my Triton oscillating belt sander to smooth out the edges. And you can definitely put this on as is, but to me it was a little bit chunky. To take away some of the material, I took it to my table saw and put on a large bevel on the bottom side. With the way my blade tilts, I had to move my fence to the left of the blade and set a scrap up against it. And this way I could pass my arm through the blade and it just make a cut along the bottom. Nice and simple, but I love the look it gives it. Now I just had to set my arm in place, making sure it was flat on the front arm support, then attach it in place with a few screws. Heck yeah, let's go ahead and throw some cushions on it and see how it looks. Oh, speaking of cushions, I recommend buying your cushions first, so if you need to modify any dimensions of the build, you can. It's very simple to adjust to fit any cushion size you find. Okay, before enjoying my handiwork, I had to put on a coat of finish to call this project a wrap. This is going outside, so it's going to be in the sun and weather. So I'm going with a marine spar finish made by Total Boat. It's called Gleam. However, it works best if you seal the wood first with their wood sealer varnish primer. This also has UV filters to protect the wood from the sun, but it's clear. It will fill in the grain, sealing all of the wood fibers and self-leveling too, so that you end up with a beautiful, consistent finish. After letting that sit until it was tack free, I started on the Gleam Top Coat, which is also UV resistant. I absolutely love this finish as you only need to wait until the previous coat is tack free to start applying the next. 
So no sanding in between coats is required, which is huge. This finish is sold in both gloss and satin, but I went with satin for mine. Okay guys, and now that is a finished project. Nice and easy, really. If you have a spot on a patio and are needing furniture, then I hope this video has helped you out. Remember that you can easily modify the design to make a two-seater or a single-seater with the same styling. Also check out two of my friends who have made similar chairs. Maker Gray has a great single-seater, then DIY Creators has one with a removable back. I'll leave you links to both in the description. All right, and that is it for this one. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on whatever I'm building next. Real quick, I wanna pause and thank this video sponsor, which is Keeps. Between coworkers, friends, and families, I have a lot of men in my life and they all have one thing in common. They want to keep their hair. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. And the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you have hair left. Keeps is a subscription service that makes it easier for men to treat their male pattern baldness. A licensed doctor will review your information online and recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you. Then your treatment is shipped directly to your door every three months. Keeps is affordable too, as they offer generic versions of FDA approved hair loss medications. Treatments can take up to four to six months or more to start seeing results, so it's important to act fast. The sooner you start, the more hair you'll have. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, you can go to keeps.com slash April to get 50% off. If you're interested in building outdoor furniture, don't forget that I have a set of plans and templates for this glider. Not only can you make one for yourself, but it makes a wonderful gift for just about any occasion. You can click here for plans and here to subscribe to the channel.